Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I learn Chinese. So, um... <laughs> People are sending me one ball. Um, you don't have to particularly get these specific books. Um, I'm going to try to show you exactly what you need in a book for you to have more effective learning. So the first book I used is this one right here. It's called Developing Chinese Elementary Comprehensive Course. Um, this is book one. There are two books for this. I'm not sure if there's a third book, but in my course, we only had two books. And you can see the contents right here, uh, basically just normal, kind of like normal dialogues that you will come across in your day-to-day -day living here. Um, so let me just show you what it looks like in the first book in the first chapter they show you how to perfect your tones and pronunciation and so on and so forth so every chapter has new words and kind of like a dialogue a text um so that you can you can show you how to use the words the new words in a dialogue and after the dialogues usually they are comprehensive exercises that you can use to kind of um, test yourself and see how, how far you've come with the, the learning. Unfortunately, what I don't like about these books is that it doesn't come with answers. But usually if you're given this in class, the teacher has answers and I um, get the PowerPoint from her with the answers and then I can go home and study. Book two is similar to book one except that it's kind of more complicated obviously so you can see that in book two there are green words these green words are basically more important than the black ones even though the black ones are important but the green ones are more important and you can see also in book two there's a cd it comes with a cd i've actually lost this one and you can see that in the second book there is no pinyin so the dialogues are more complicated and also the questions are a lot more in um, book two. So what I like about this, these books is that, you know, in the new words, there's uh, characters, then there's pinyin, and then it shows you whether this is a adjective, a noun, or an adverb. So it shows you where exactly to use it in a sentence. Then it also comes with the translation. Uh, so yeah, after the dialogues is straightforward into the comprehensive notes and after the notes there are in class activities and then comprehensive exercises that you can do on yourself by yourself at home so this book as well doesn't come with answers so I usually got the answers from my voucher which means teacher in English so yeah basically that's it so after I finished the book one and book two we went on to use um, in, we went on to do medical Chinese which is basically self-explanatory so in the medical Chinese you can see that the content are um, medical related things so you can see in book one it's basically systemic anatomy locomotor systems digestive and respiratory systems and so forth so um, this medical book is also similar to the comprehensive elementary book that we used. It also comes with a CD. So, yeah. In every chapter, there are new words. So you can see the new words are related to that chapter and whatever medical chapter you'll be doing then. So for this one, for example, this one's anatomy, and you can see that we're learning systemic anatomy, human body, head, neck, back, chest, abdomen. So on and so forth. So these are basically words that you will not find, that you may not come across if you are not doing medicine. Um, these are words that you will not come across in the elementary comprehensive book. So yeah, it's new words and then words that you might that are that you might have learned in the comprehensive book and then a dialogue. And this one comes with a translation as well. So I like that about it. After the dialogue, there's usually um, 
learning and speaking so that you can um, so that you can practice your pronunciation and then there's an exercise that you can do in class or at home so yeah I like this book I like this book very much I didn't really write much in this book because I don't want to make like make it dirty because I'm not going to use it in the future so I don't want to mess it up like my first book my first comprehensive Chinese book after the book one we did this first semester and then the next semester we did a book two also similar to the book one it also comes with a CD and but then it's obviously more complicated than book one so you can see the contents are still medically related blood tissue, muscle and bone tissue, nerve tissue, medical genetics and physiology so on and so forth so it's basically the same thing it comes with um, new words in the beginning um, and then a dialogue the dialogues here are kind of more longer and more complicated they give an example of a patient and a doctor or a teacher and a student so it's basically um, different scenarios that you might come across in a Chinese hospital and um, conversations that you might have with different patients. So after doing book one and book two, um, you are able to write HSK3 and HSK4. Um, in my school, it's compulsory to actually write HSK, to pass HSK3 before graduating. So you cannot get your degree if you do not pass HSK3. So I wrote that last semester and when I I didn't write it straight after studying book two of elementary comprehensive course. I waited like a, another year because I was just lazy about it and I just didn't want to write it then. So I wrote it last semester and I passed it. So yeah, I was so happy about that. Um, let me show you the book, the book that I used, like the booklet. Basically, if you're writing HSK3, there are a total of 600 vocabulary words that you need to know before writing the exam. So out of the 600, you need to know at least, I think, 400 for you to pass. But um, if you want to really pass, I think you should just try your best to um, be familiar with the 600 words. So it's characters and then the opinion and then the uh, it will show you whether it's a noun, a verb or an adverb, an adjective and then the translation and then there's a sentence then there's an example like a sentence showing you how you can use the word some words can actually be used as nouns and verbs so for example xia can also mean for and xia can also mean next so for as a verb and next as a noun so yeah uh, so before I wrote my HSK I made sure that I was familiar with at least 500 of these words it took me uh, two weeks to go through everything thoroughly and I was able to pass my exam and then yeah so HSK3 is actually not that difficult if you put your heart to it and study so, so while I was studying um, for my HSK3 I used a particular website called mmks.chinesebird.com.cn Basically on this website, they have model papers, past papers that you can use to study and um, you can get an idea and a feel of how the exam kind of looks like and feels like and yeah, you can kind of get used to the exam before writing it. So when I actually got to writing my exam, there were some questions that were repeated and I felt so happy that I went through these papers so yeah so if you want to um, if you want the website I will leave it in the description box and you can check out the website and try to practice on your own I think they also have like um, different kinds of Chinese exams it's not just HSK so you can check that out if you are actually writing a particular Chinese exam you can check it out on this um, website if it's actually there so if you're looking for a Chinese book to use, make sure that it has at least one CD that you can use to um, practice or pr pronunciation. If it's online, make sure that it has like an audio um, book that you can use to help with your pronunciation. So yeah, and make sure that in every book there are like new words, um, exercises that you can do, easy dialogues, questions that you can read to check if you actually understand the dialogues and what you study. 
so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video everyone and so i will see you in my next video you can leave in the comment section what kind of videos you want to see next and if you are learning chinese you can also leave the name of chinese books that you think are very helpful for you and um i feel like i need to work on my um, reading skills and listening because when Chinese kind of speak quickly, I don't really understand, but my pronunciations are always on point and yeah, so if I can kind of work on my listening and reading skill, then I think my Chinese will be much more better. So yeah, I will see you in my next video. Zai Jian! Baby,